it, it means that. They actually tell you it means that. You don't need me to tell you that. They actually tell you that democracy equals fascism. Fascism as in the extreme Catholic fascism of Hitler, Mussolini, uh, uh, Franco, Pavlik, and half a dozen other Catholic leaders and dictators in World War II. They're all Catholic and they all implemented extreme fascism, extreme democracy in World War II. Now, if you want the proof, look for the fascist symbol. And what's the fascist symbol? The fascist symbol is the bundle of sticks with an axe wrapped in leather. The sticks represent uh, uh, corporal punishment and the axe represents capital punishment. And the bundle represents the authority and power of Rome for the law to be just. That is what the fasces mean. That's what fascism is. It is the implementation of a political model where the Roman cult and the Vatican is considered at the pinnacle. Now, where are the greatest number of fascist symbols? Well, it wouldn't take a genius to realize that if democracy and fascism are two sides of the same coin, then one would look to the home of democracy then. And guess what? That's where we see the greatest number of symbols of fascism. Look at the, uh, look at the uh, tribute to Lincoln. What's he sitting on? Two of the largest symbols of fascism in the world. The largest fasces that I have ever seen are the two that Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Springer, is sitting on. Two giant fasces. Look at the Senate. Look at Congress. The symbols of fascism abound. And this system was created in the 16th century. Now, the word in 1372, the word common law, as opposed to Anglo Saxon law. If you want to talk about oaths and vows, if you want to talk about rights, you should be talking about Anglo Saxon law. But I find time and time again people get sucked in and talk about common law. Well, common law comes from two words, com, committo, meaning to entrust and commit, and munis, in Latin meaning burden, public duty, service. And common law means, literally, it means to entrust, commit by consent to a burden, public duty, service, or obligation. And if you want to know what that's equivalent to, that's equivalent to voluntary enslavement or lawful slavery. If you want to talk about rights, if you want to talk about ancient rights, back to Charlemagne and earlier, if you want to talk about rights that were recognized by Yeshua, the Gnostics, by Jesus, if you want to talk about rights that they cannot extinguish, then talk about Anglo-Saxon rights, not common law rights. There is no rights in common law, only privileges. That's the perversion of their system. Now, I'm going to wrap up and I'm going to wrap up with a couple of summaries to show you just how far the system goes. And you'll see that Article 133 to 144 lists a series of words. If you look at the index, government, parliament, commandment, employment, entertainment, advertisement, indictment, testament, judgment, enforcement, imprisonment, and enslavement. What's the common theme in all of those? Yes, mint, mentis, mind, mind influence system. Let's look at 133 and then I'll wrap up with 133 only. And 133, Article 133 is government. I'm just going to look at Canon 1376 and then we'll wrap up. The Canon 1376. The term government was first invented at the Jesuit College of English in the late 16th century, then delivered through the guise of the Shakespeare portfolio as part of the introduction of the world's first mind influence system that eventually replaced the phys with physical slavery with voluntary slavery of the mind. The word government is derived from three Latin words. Ago, meaning to manage, drive. Verna, meaning servant, born in their master's home 
and mentis, meaning mind. Hence, the true original meaning of the word government is to manage, drive the mind of a servant born in their master's home, a plantation. Now, Shakespeare was the Trojan horse, and of the words that end in meant, no less than 250 of those words were created under Shakespeare. 250 words. An entire mind influence system was created under Shakespeare. Now, you can consider that Shakespeare was who they say he was. You can consider that Shakespeare might have been Francis Bacon or a Jesuit priest. I put to you, as the Jesuits revealed when they showed that Shakespeare had signed into the Jesuit College of English under his family name, Breakspear, that the exiles from England, the Catholic exiles from England, that all came together into the Jesuit College of England in Rome during that period of persecution under Elizabeth, are the group that gave us the world's first mind influence system that has been so successful, it is the same matrix we live under today. Well, I've uh, said a lot tonight. We've covered a lot because there is a lot to get through. But I, I hope you find in, in seeing this that it's useful. I hope you find when you're looking for a sense of understanding that this is revealing. Not only do we have to reveal the extent of the control system and the lie, but we also have to move forward from that. So there is a fine balance between the two. I hope you find that that balance is struck well with what we've done. I look forward to answering your questions now, and I thank for your support. Uh, last but not least, I just raised with you, and I've said this before, um, it would be remiss of me to miss this, but I left it to the last end. You know, when people have asked me how are things going financially, uh, just to let you know that things are still very, very tight and difficult for me, and that's because of the time that it's requiring to finish this to maintain the promise for the end of the year. At the moment, I still have been relying on the help and support of others, and, and it remains very difficult. So there was a list of areas there supporting on Eucadia, but I took those down, and I can't really return to putting anything up in terms of donations. And the reason for that is that there was a small blog article written, which didn't go anywhere, but it was a small blog article that went through, it took copies of someone else's words on Eucadia and added one thing. It went to that page, looked at the donations and said, Eucadia is all about making money. It's a cult and it's all about making money. After 20 years and sacrificing almost $2 million of money to do this, with no home, with no assets, with nothing other than the beautiful Cocker Spaniels and the love of my partner and what I've got, that so enraged me that there is no way that I'm going to put back up any kind of donation process. If you can help, great. But I just want to give you truthfully, things are very tight at the moment and remain very tight. Well, look, thank you. And I'm going to look forward to your questions and look forward to answering them, whether they're typed or whether they are live. Okay, Terry, thank you. Just see so if we can get Terry up there. Can you hear us, Terry? So you might be muted. Okay. All right, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Hi. All right, good. Is that coming in loud enough then? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, thank you for that, Frank. It was, uh, excellent information. And uh, we put the websites up several times so people could go click on those links, cognitive law and positive law. Uh, got a couple of questions to start out with on the chat, uh, if we could. Um, yeah. Okay. The first question is, um, if you 
if you have any information or opinion about this. What is up with the City of London British Intel? Uh, they have disinfo agents out there uh, everywhere in force trying to hide their involvement with 9-11. They seem scared that Americans will come up with the smoking gun and come after those responsible. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Um, look, thank you for the question. And uh, I see that, yeah, look, I firstly on 9-11, I, I steer clear of 9-11, and the only reason I steer clear of 9-11 is that, like, well, it's worse than the assassination of John F. Kennedy because it killed thousands of people, and it was a, an act of terrorism, as just JFK, but even more so to uh, keep people in perpetual fear. I, I steer clear of it because I think people have doing a, a sterling job in terms of uncovering the truth of 9-11. I am not familiar in terms of the facts that connect or might connect uh, people in London to the overall process, so I can't really comment on that. On the more general point of disinfo agents and uh, London, just as there are disinfo agents right throughout the world, uh, I am certain that they have uh, people that they use as their mouthpiece people in the truth movement, quote unquote, that send off people down the wrong alley, and I'm sure that happens. But again, I, unlike uh, ones that I see in the States, for example, that have uh, appeared to be more, uh, uh, more obvious disinfo agents, I can't really comment on who they are. But look, this is a universal issue. Uh, disinformation uh, is one of the key things that they do. And uh, their best form of disinformation is the mainstream media. So that's that's all I can really comment on on those questions. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. That one was the question put in earlier, and then um, Mammy put it back in so that we could uh, see it again. Um, yeah. This, not sure if this question was meant for you, but it's a pretty good question. It might... Uh, be a good way to summarize everything that you've um, corrected or changed and have added to the cognitive law. And this the question is, how have people been forced to get a tax number? And um, possibly starting, kind of doing a summary and starting from the beginning as to how that occurs. And it may be the wrong word to say forced, but um, misled into believing they must get one, so to speak. Well, it is important because um, our, our knowledge in terms of, of how the system has laid control over time, it's not a static thing. That They've been adding to their system of control every few decades, as, as you know, Terry, and as I'm sure many people know. And, and because it's not a static system, what was founded in the 16th century doesn't simply mean that it's all the same today. What, what's important going back to the, to the beginning is to understand the very foundations and then work through. So, for example, the 19th century, when we saw the concept of the local government area, the LGA, come in in the form of the quote-unquote council, we can see how that enhanced and added to what was already in place in effectively uh, considering that we're all uh, mental patients in hospital wards. And that's exactly what the LGA system does. It puts them in a position of medical guardians, uh, a very, very powerful situation based on mind that we are incompetent. So in the case of tax, I think the simple answer is uh, if you don't have a tax number, then they tell you flat stick that you can't earn you can't get a job, you can't pay uh, for anything, and you can't feed your family. And they make that very clear, that in, for, for many people, particularly if you've got a skill that is a, a, a skill that is typically called professional, if you don't have a tax number, you can't uh, be and do and use your skills. So it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty rank, but that's exactly how they do it. Now, when we originally established the, uh, the process of the trusts, we mentioned to people that one way to 
um, 